I've been waiting for this moment for four years. Yes, this is just two of the Snapdragon X Elite laptops that we ordered. And in this video, I am gonna address all of the inconsistent benchmarks that we've seen online by hitting this head first. Yes, I have the lowest base skew of the X Elite right here, which I believe is the 78. And this is the 84, which is the most powerful version of the X Elite, which only comes in this Galaxy Book 4 Edge, while I have the 13.8 inch Microsoft Surface laptop right here. So in this video, we're gonna be doing a ton of performance testing with both of these laptops, so that way you know exactly which Snapdragon X Elite SKU is right for you. Let's get this thing out of the box. This is the Dune version and the wrapping, oh gosh. <laughs> I messed this up already. <laughs> uh, whatever. Oh, hey, yeah, this feels, yeah, kind of like it did before, but it feels nice. I mean, this dune color, pretty sweet. Ooh, I like how they did the dark, the dark sand or beige right here. It looks awesome. pretty clean. Wow, and I'm actually surprised that there are no stickers. Yes, no Intel sticker, finally. Honestly, guys, I love the design of this laptop, probably because it's kind of like a MacBook clone, to be honest. Now, while this thing's setting up, let's unbox the Galaxy Book 4 Edge. You got the Samsung, you got three stickers, baby. You better know that's an energy star right there. Got the X Elite for the battery life. And take a look at this design language, guys. Samsung is pulling an Apple MacBook Air with these edges that go in, but the ports actually have this nice little bump out. That looks pretty nice, honestly, I like it. So we got these bad boys set up. I've set them both to performance mode. We have them plugged in right now because we wanna see the performance while plugged in and unplugged. By the way, this is the X Elite 80 SKU, so it's not quite as fast as the 84 SKU, which is exclusively in this Samsung. This one actually clocks higher boost clock up to 4.2 instead of 4.0. The base clock is 3.8 instead of 3.4 and the GPU is faster as well, 4.6 T-flops compared to 3.8. Let's go ahead and run Geekbench 6's CPU benchmark. By the way, both of these have 16 gigs of RAM. The Surface has a 512 gig SSD for 1,350, which is honestly a pretty good price, compared to 1,750 for the Samsung, which comes with a one terabyte SSD. And already I'm seeing something interesting on both of these. I'm seeing the cores, and the first four cores are actually limited to just below 3.0 gigahertz, while in the Surface, the rest of them are at 3.4, and on the Samsung, they're at 3.8. Those are the base clocks. For some reason, the wattage is not showing, and it, it's not updating in terms of real life clock speed as well, so I wonder why. And here we have our scores, and this is actually quite interesting. We have 2,700 compared to 2,800 in terms of single cores, so this one right here is about 2.6% faster, and then in terms of multi-core, we have about 8% faster for the Samsung, so that's where it kind of becomes worth it, but in single core, it's actually not that big of a difference so you might not have to go for the higher SKU. Now, both of these are slower than the Apple's M3 and a lot slower than the M4 in terms of single core, so they do have some improvement to do there. And now with that said, let me unplug both of these and run them again to see what kind of battery life we are gonna get. By the way, I am gonna make sure they're both in the performance mode. All right, the on battery test finish, and holy smokes, guys, this is very impressive. The Surface barely slowed down. Looking at the multi-core, 14,200 compared to basically the same score. Only the single core dropped by about 100 points, so wow, Microsoft, good job. You're not losing a lot of performance on battery, but the Samsung, take a look at this. 13,485, you're losing quite a bit of multi-core performance. And the crazy thing is it's actually slower, the best SKU is slower than the mid-tier SKU 
on battery power. Who would have known? I mean, a lot of people are buying the Samsung specifically because it's the only one with the top SKU, but on battery power, this one is beating it, the 13 inch model. And now the last test I wanna do is put these to their most efficient mode. So I have recommended on the surface and we have best power efficiency on the Samsung and let's redo it again. All right, what the heck, holy smoke says, I cannot believe this. The Samsung's performance got butchered. 8,700 multis? What? Are you joking? The single core, or only 1,600? That's like a flipping Android phone. What is this? Compared to the Surface, yeah, it dropped down from 2,600 to 2,200. It did go down, but not nearly as much as the Samsung. The multi-core barely went down less than 2,000 points. That's in the most efficient mode on battery. What is Samsung doing? Maybe it's because of the 16 inch display size. They're trying to get as much battery performance as possible. And they're probably using this setup for their battery numbers that they're advertising. What the heck is this? And now I've put them back into best performance mode. Let's actually run Speedometer's 3.0 web browsing benchmark to kind of see the general snappiness of the systems and if there's any difference between these two SKUs. And look at that, we have our score. The mid-tier SKU is slightly faster, 28.6 compared to 28.2. Wow, I wonder why Samsung is limiting the performance on the battery because like in Geekbench, it's slightly slower. And if you're interested in Speedometer 2.1, I just ran that as well, and same thing. The Surface 13.8 inch with the mid-tier SKU is a little bit faster. And now, of course, let's test out Cinebench 2024, the new version. We're gonna do a single run of the single core first. And here we go, finally, the single thread is done. We have 121 on the Surface, 127 on the Samsung. That's actually 5% faster, so you are getting actually some sort of a difference here in the more realistic, real-world Cinebench. And now let's do the multi-core test. And wait a second, guys. I'm hearing some fans. Okay, I'm hearing some weird whistling from the Samsung. This really annoying kind of coil sound. Whereas the Surface, I'm hearing the fans now, but it's nice and smooth. No whistling, no weird high-pitched noises. Yeah, guys, this is so annoying. This high-pitched noise from the Samsung. It is bugging me so much right now. What? Can you guys believe it? The Surface just finished first. The middle skew, the 80, compared to the 84, no way, okay. We got the scores, 906 points for the Surface and 867 for the Samsung with the top SKU. That's 4.5% faster. I, I just can't believe so many people are buying the Samsung because it's the only one available with the top X Elite SKU, but it turns out you don't really have to. 4.5% faster with this one. You know what? Let's actually run the 10 minute test to give this larger 16 inch chassis some time to shine because the thermals should be better, right? It's a 16 inch compared to a 13.8 inch and it has the top skew. Man, I think we're in for a surprise. All right, 10 minute test and start. All right, it's been over 10 minutes and I wanna do a quick thermal test right here on the surfaces to see which one is Hotter, we have 47 degrees on the Surface Laptop 46. Right there, we got a hot spot. And over on the get, whoa, look at, what? Only 40 degrees Celsius. That is a big difference on the Samsung Book 4 Edge. Why the heck is it that big of a difference? Look at that, 46 degrees Celsius, 40. What? We finally got a score and I cannot believe it, guys. 855 points for the Surface with the mid-tier skew, 857 on the Samsung. Only two points higher despite being the better skew in a 16-inch laptop with a bunch of thermal headroom. Samsung could have pushed the chip harder 
went up to 46, 47 degrees Celsius if they wanted to, but why are they not? It's in the best performance mode in a 16 inch larger chassis that should dissipate heat better. I am so disappointed in this 16 inch book for Edge. And at this point, I'm having a hard time figuring out why anybody would buy this instead of the Surface after all these tests that we've just done. I can't believe how well this thing is performing. And now let's get into some graphics testing. Alrighty, we have 3 d Mark's Wildlife Extreme Gaming Benchmark. This is very well optimized for mobile platforms and ARM chips like Apple Silicon and Android phones as well. So let's do the Wildlife Extreme Unlimited test, which is not gonna count the resolution into it. And what the heck, it just had an error occur on the Samsung. I mean, it looks like the other one's running just fine. So I I guess I'll try it again. All right, we got our score and it looks like the Samsung is a little bit faster. We have 40.89 FPS compared to 38.09. That's about 7.35% faster in terms of graphics. So that is definitely a nice improvement, but in a 16 inch laptop, that still isn't that great. And of course the X-Elite is definitely not the best in terms of graphics performance because we've tested the M4 iPad Pro that has about 52 FPS. So it's quite a lot faster. Of course, that's not in any laptops yet. It will be later this year, but I'd say it's definitely good enough for general computing and maybe some low end gaming, but not anything high end. And I just checked the M2 and the M3 MacBook Air, which of course are available. The M3 got 42 FPS, so it's beating out even the best SKU of the X Elite. The M2 MacBook Air got 34.2, so it's a little bit slower than this SKU, so that's actually quite surprising. But since Wildlife Extreme is more of a mobile benchmark, let's run the brand new Steel Nomad Lite, which is more modern, has heavier workloads. And wow, there you go. Now this Samsung is finally starting to shine. It's 17.6% higher in terms of FPS, 17.51 compared to 14.88. Now we're starting to see a difference with that higher end skew. And you know what? For the last part of this test, let's actually run the stress test because I really want to see how big of a difference there will be if you're putting a graphics load on them. Maybe this thing will shine even more and it will be much more worth it. Let's run it. So this stress test has been running for 15 minutes out of the full 20. And I do want to check up on these thermals. Let's take a look. We have 39 degrees Celsius on the surface and 36 degrees Celsius, 37 on the Samsung with the higher end GPU. That is very interesting. Once again, 39 degrees Celsius. Well, what does that tell me? That tells me that the GPU is underpowered compared to the CPU, which can actually get this thing up to 46, 47 degrees Celsius. There is a ton of thermal headroom in these laptops, but the GPU is not powerful enough to maximize it. All right, the stress test is finished, and it looks like the Samsung with the top end X Elite SKU had a 20% higher score. So for graphics, it looks like that SKU is definitely worth it over the mid tier version. Now, both of these, the stability in terms of frame rate was very, very good, almost no difference at all, which means that neither of these machines were throttled by the chassis. Basically, no issues at all. These could easily handle more power, but the X Elite just does not give it. So now with all of that tested and compared, let's answer the original question. Which Snapdragon X Elite SKU should you buy? Once again, we have the mid-tier 80 SKU 
versus the 84, which is exclusively available in the Galaxy Book 4 Edge? Well, in my personal opinion, I don't think it matters much. I'm honestly disappointed with the multi-core performance on battery power of this laptop. Even the 16 inch is just clocking itself down to I guess save battery life, which the battery life is very impressive in my testing. It's been doing really good compared to Intel laptops, which die a lot faster than this. And just because I'm curious, it looks like the Surface has 23% versus 37%, so yes, it is slowing itself down and getting a little bit better battery life, but honestly, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't just go with the mid-tier 80 SKU and just choose whatever laptop you like instead of being limited to the Samsung top SKU. Now, the only difference is graphics, where this one does have up to 20% faster graphics performance in that Steel Nomad stress test. So that is very nice. But keep in mind that the Apple M3 chip in the MacBook Air is faster than this GPU. Then you gotta consider the M4 chip. Then you have the M3 Pro, the M3 Max. Those are a lot faster than this. And honestly, I wouldn't even recommend the M3 chip for gaming. I always recommend the M3 Max. So honestly, with this being an ARM-based chip with a lot of apps being emulated and games being emulated as well, I would probably steer clear of the X Elite if you wanna do graphics related work or gaming and just buy one of these for the CPU performance, which is actually very impressive. Good job Qualcomm on that. And I think in combination with the battery life, this is gonna be an excellent machine for everyday use, web browsing, YouTube, a little bit of productivity. It's a great machine with the new X Elite chip. And in terms of the SKU, forget the highest end 84, don't buy it, just go with the mid-tier 80. It's a very, very good option and I'm impressed by that multi-core performance. So with that said, hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you did, go ahead and comment down below and click that circle above to subscribe because we're doing a lot more X Elite videos coming up and check out one of those two right there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.